Hello, welcome to today's video uh, uh, about Lightroom CC. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the selective tools you can use to just edit portions of an image. Uh, previous uh, videos have shown you the uh, other tools which are good for editing um, the whole image, but now I'm going to show you some selective tools where you can edit, again, just parts of the image. Um, there's a little bit of almost Photoshop in these tools. Uh, they have some uh, properties uh, borrowed from Photoshop and some abilities. Uh, they're not as precise as Photoshop, but they're, uh, I think, easier to learn because you don't have to learn all of the Photoshop things. Plus, you can do everything here in uh, Lightroom CC. So first, we're going to start off with uh, a tool that I love and I use quite frequently. So we're going to jump over to these photos and take a look and see how we're going to make some edits. So uh, first photo here, uh, this lady on uh, the dock in Kirkland. And uh, as I look at this photo, I think, oh my goodness, I wish I could remove this thing. And what do you think that thing is? What is a thing that would be awesome if it was removed? If you're saying this buoy here, you are correct. Now, when you take photos, uh, ideally, if you see something that's a distraction that is uh, just gonna get in the way of the story you wanna tell with the photo, ideally, you would remove it before you create the photo. But obviously I couldn't remove this. It's breaking the law and I couldn't go swimming that day. I don't know why. Cold water probably. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a tool called the healing brush. The healing brush. And it's over here on the right-hand side of the Lightroom CC window. Uh, it looks like a Band-Aid because it's healing. So I'm gonna click on that to turn it on. And then we get these uh, tool properties. So the properties the tool has are basically the size, the feather, and the opacity. So let me show you what each does. The size is the size of the brush and how big the area you're gonna cover. The uh, feather is the softness of the edge of the brush. And then the opacity is how much as you brush of the original is still uh, showing through. So if you brush at 100% opacity, the brush is 100% opaque and there's nothing left of the original. And that's usually where I leave it, 100% opacity. The feather I usually leave at about 50. It's just a good all around 99% of the time it works well for me. And then the size I will vary depending on the area I'm trying to cover. One of the cool things about the size is you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse so I can change the size so you see I'm changing the size of the brush with the wheel on my mouse. Handy, handy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this disappear really quickly. So the way, here's the strategy. Here's how to do this. Uh, one, try and be fast. So you can get on to the next photo. Um, so what I, the way I'm gonna do that is try and cover this with one brush stroke. And in order to do that, I'm gonna make the brush just a little bit larger than the object I'm trying to cover. The reason for that is the way this tool works is it's gonna sample uh, parts of the image, both where you're brushing and, and if you can include some of the areas outside of what you're trying to cover, it gives it a better, uh, more data that it can build the replacement, the healing with. So my brush size here is about 77. I'm gonna start with the plus sign just above uh, the object I'm covering, and then I'm gonna click and hold and drag mostly straight down. Now you'll see it's painting with opaque white. I can't see what I've covered. I've kinda of gotta remember what I do. So I started a little above, and then I click and held, and then went a little below, in this case, what I'm trying to cover. Then I'm gonna let go. And Lightroom's gonna grab a sample from another part of the image. So here's how that works. It's just really cool. So that's, that's it. That's it. Uh, oftentimes when Lightroom does this, it will be super good at picking the right spot. And uh, every once in a while, it will do something like this though. It will do that. And it will grab a spot that doesn't make a good blend. So all you gotta do, this is called the source, the area that you are pulling from and you just drag a source and you'll see a preview at your target, which is where you brushed. 
and you'll see a preview there and you're just trying to make things blend so it doesn't look like you made an edit uh, and you just have to move this around a little bit find a good spot until everything looks good and if you can't find a good spot you might need to redo the brush brush it again that's not too bad so with a soft edge that kind of just feathers in and disappears um, so it's just that easy now here's the limit of this it's super fast super quick super easy but as you can see you need a source that exactly matches size shape orientation as your target so if i draw a shape like this the source is going to be like this and if i don't have a good matching space enough space to create that it won't work also, this tool works best on uh, non-repeating organic patterns. So water, trees, um, wood, uh, gravel, sky, things like that where there's not an obvious pattern that you have to exactly match size, orientation, and uh, perspective. Another place where this tool breaks down a little bit is where or con high contrast edges. Uh, so let me show you both those things, both the, the size uh, of the source and the target, as well as the high contrast edge. So let's say I wanted to get rid of this uh, little tie-off thing. Um, so I, I have a brush that's about the same size as I had before. I'm just going to click, hold, and drag, and let go. So what it's doing is it's sampling from the water, which is not the right texture. Uh, and you can see where it's smudging, where those edges meet. Uh, ideally, this would be the better place over here, and the water looks good-ish, but the, the wood doesn't because there's such a strong contrast difference between my target and my source, plus there's a little bit of smudging where that edge meets. So certain things don't work. You just, you'll learn how to uh, do this most effectively as the more experience you get. I can always edit this after the fact. You'll see once I have the tool active, any place where I've brushed, there will be a blue pin, a blue dot. And if I click on that dot, it activates that specific uh, healing brush. And I can uh, change things. I can choose new source, a new target. I can move either one around uh, and uh, change my mind. So there you go. I'm just undoing all those because I liked it the way it was at the beginning. So that's a start with this uh, spot. Uh, it's called the Healing Brush in Lightroom CC. Uh, in uh, Lightroom Classic, it's called the Spot Removal Brush. Let's go to the next photo and do some more experimenting with this and uh, practice. So what this tool was originally designed for is to remove uh, spots that are either on your lens or on your sensor that show up in your image. And you can see them here. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So you can see them here, over here. Uh, where's some more? There's one right there. There's some up here in the top left. They often show up in the sky if there's no clouds. So all I'm going to do with for remove these is just make a small brush that's just barely big enough, and I'm just going to click once on each of them. And in, in this, with this plain blue sky, it does a really nice job just picking a good source. Now you notice these look different than the brush I did previously. When you just do a single click, it'll just show you all the little circles where you clicked. Another limit here is obviously, uh, not obviously, but all the, the spots that are being removed are circle shapes. Not ovals, but perfect circles. Not squares, not rectangles, not triangles. So there we go. I uh, got rid of most of them. Uh, here's an example of where this tool would not work well. Let's say I wanted to get rid of this lens flare on the building. Because of the angle of those, if I brush, I don't have a source. I mean, yeah, a source that would be the same perspective and orientation. The source I would have to replace this is over here, and it's going the other direction, and it's a little different color. So that wouldn't work. Plus, I like lens flare. So uh, I'm going to replace, I'm going to get rid of uh, the both trees in both corners. Uh, this one's super easy in the top left. So I'm going to click on that and get rid of that. Just one single click. This one's a little trickier. Um, you have to, because we're going to have some edge. So we got uh, on the right-hand edge. So 
Um, sometimes where things meet the edge, you might get some smudging, but the key to that is just practice. So I'm gonna make a big brush and then just click and hold and brush. And I'm making sure to go outside the area, cover it multiple times. Think about like when you paint a wall, you overlap your stroke. So even though I've already covered this and it looks like I've got everything, I'm just going back through in the middle and just brushing, brushing, brushing again, just a little bit extra. And there you go. So there's my target here. And here's my source over here. It's making the exact same fluffy cloud shape. And it perfectly replaced, hid that tree there in the corner. So uh, here's where we started with this photo. And here's where we're at. So this tool uh, is called the Healing Brush in Lightroom uh, CC. I like to call it the distraction removal brush because it gets rid of things in the in the image that are uh, potentially pull your eye away from what I want, what you hope the person who's looking at your image will see. Let's do one more, some more practice here on uh, this image and. Um, Again, distractions. There's about four of them in this image. So the first one you'll probably see is the light switch over here. So let's just get rid of that. There's one. Click and gone. This works so well when you have a simple background uh, like that. Uh, we're also going to get rid of the HP logo. Remember, if you can read some text in an image, your eyes gonna, and brain are going to decipher it. So let's just get rid of that. Single click. Gone. Also, I've got a little logo up here in the top of this Chromebook, so click and drag. That's gone. And last but not least, we have this uh, blurry line back here, which is a, pan a door panel. Um, so in the midst of all that emptiness, there's a little bit of blurry line that creates distraction for our eyes. It pulls us away from the student at his computer. So. Um, for this, anytime I have this kind of compound shapes, I usually do multiple brushes to get rid of them because it's then easier to adjust individually than one that didn't quite work. Also, uh, for this one, I'm gonna um, have to be a little careful around the edges and I'll show you that in just a sec. So here we go. We're gonna start uh, at the top. I've got a brush that's about, let's see, 76 I think it is. Click, hold and drag, I'm gonna pull straight down. And I don't wanna to touch that chair. Okay, let me show you what happened if you touch the chair. You get a little flame. <laughs> the chair is on fire. So you get this smudge where it's trying to uh, figure out that edge. So we don't want that. I'm gonna go over to the right-hand side, do the same thing. And there we go. That's better. Now, here's the little bit of a trick though. Uh, you Generally, I wanna start at left or right edge, but if I do that, you'll see that it changes to the hand tool, which means it wants to move an existing brush. So the solution to that in this case is kind of simple. Just start in the middle and then go left, well, that's right, and then left. Uh, so you can go back and forth. You don't have to start at an edge. You can start in the middle and work out however you like to work. So there we go, that's the healing brush in Lightroom. You can see we've got uh, multiple brushes showing. The one that's active in the interface is got, it's blue and it's got a white dot in the center. If I ever wanna delete a brush, I can just click on it, make it active, hit the delete key, and that brush goes away. I wanna keep that one though, so I'm gonna undo that. So that is pretty simple. That is the, the healing brush tool in Lightroom, as always, uh, Lightroom CC, that is. As always, if you have questions how this works, leave them some comments below, send me an email, uh, and I will be glad to assist, provide additional uh, information to have you be successful. Um, this is a great tool. I use it quite frequently. Uh, I probably use it in at least half of my photos because there's something, something going on that uh, I couldn't remove or didn't quite notice when I was creating the photo. So, Hope that helps. Hope you're having fun using Lightroom, uh, learning new things, uh, expanding the way you tell stories with your photos using this awesome software. So until I see you in the next video, I hope you stay well. You're having an awesome time creating images and uh, exploring the way you make art.